we have growth energy, reproductive energy, and, and actually all of the elements fall somewhere. And then some of the fertilizers are combinations and they're in the middle because they have some growth, some reproductive. So let's just go through some of this here. For nutrient sprays, okay, so if you got your thing here all pumped up and you're going for your garden, how I like to do is I want to see a light misting on the leaf surface. I do not want to see dripping and running off. We want to just do like, so really, once you have the, you know, you could just go like this in your garden. To get your soil right, to get everything working so you can have a noticeable difference in taste is going to be working with things that cost more sometimes and it may not be available at the co-op and, and it's going to be cumbersome at times, you got to bring things in and it's going to cost more. So. Um, but we're going to deal, when we fix this thing, we're going to get different kind of economics on the, on the other side too. But it doesn't do anything to the glyphosate that's still a strong chelator, still systemic in the plant, moving through the plant. And that's why every time you have a genetic engineered plant for BT or for glyphosate or anything else, you disrupt the integrity of the genetic code and you always have a yield drag. When they've compared isogenic lines, You'll never see a yield increase, or we haven't seen a yield increase, won't say never there, but we haven't seen a yield increase in it with genetic engineering in any crop that I'm aware of. How are you going to feed a growing world population with genetic engineering if you can't increase the yield of the quality? This is a one of two long-term feeding studies, pigs. You can, this is in Iowa. Judy Carmen, Harv Leeger, and several other veterinarians involved here. Pig stomach was very much like ours. That's what a normal human stomach would look like. Human or a pig stomach. That's on the non-GMO. Look at your GMO stomach. You see those little black spots or the ulcers. You see that all through the intestine as the intestinal wall deteriorates. The leaky gut. In cattle what you see is huge ulcers in the rumen so that the cud will drop down into the true stomach without being properly digested. You can have up to 400 parts per million. Remember a tenth of a part per million is toxic to those organisms that make you and me happy. Because that gives us the gut-brain connection through their products. Where's the research that changed from a tenth of a part per million to these levels? And the statement from the EPA and the FDA both is that we don't do any independent research. We rely solely on the statement of the companies that these levels are safe. Why provide the billions of dollars in budget if they betray the public trust?